Dear students, I hope you are all well and studying in your home. Last week, we completed our chapter Reproduction in Plants and Animals and know about the different methods. So, in NCRT book also, a uh, chapter given Reproduction in Animals only. So, in this chapter, some things are same as we discussed in our earlier videos, but some things which are add-on to this chapter. So, we discussed about viparous and oviparous animals, which you have to know. We have learned that some animals give birth to young ones, while some animals lay eggs, which later develop into young ones. The animals which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals. Okay. Those animals which lay eggs are called oviparous animals. The following activity will help you understand better and differentiate between oviparous and viviparous animals. So, try to observe eggs of the following organism. If possible, frog, lizard, butterfly or moth, hen and crow or any other part. Were you able to observe X of all of them, make drawing of the X that you have observed. The X of a few animals are easy to observe because their mothers lay them outside their bodies. These are examples of oviparous animals. But you would not be able to collect the eggs of a dog, cow or cat. This is because they do not lay eggs. The mother gives birth to the young ones. These are examples of viviparous animals. Young ones to adults. The new individual which are born on haste from the eggs continue to grow till they become adults. In some animals, the young ones may look very different from the adults recall the life cycle of the silkworm okay as you read in your class 7th also egg larva or caterpillar then pupa then adult okay observe the different stages of frog also starting from the egg to adult stage we find that there are three distinct stages that is egg to tadpole larva adult okay don't the tadpoles look so different from the adults? Can you imagine that these tadpoles would someday become frogs? Similarly, the caterpillar of the pupa of silkworm looks very different from the adult moth. The features that are present in the adult are not found in these young ones. Then what happens to the tadpoles or caterpillars thereafter? You must have seen a beautiful moth emerging out of the cocoon. In the case of tadpoles, they transform into adults capable of jumping and swimming. The transformation of the larva into an adult through drastic changes is called metamorphosis. What about the changes that we observe in our body as we grow? Do you think we do undergo metamorphosis? In human beings, body parts similar to those present in the adults are present from the time of birth. person, you already read. Okay, these are the stages of life cycle of frog. Okay, so uh, first uh, it lay eggs, then it is the structure of early tadpole. Okay, and this is the structure of late tadpole, and it converted into adult frog. Another interesting story of dolly or the clone is given in this chapter that cloning is the production of an exact copy of a cell okay any other living part or a complete organism cloning of an animal was successfully performed for the first time by ian wilmot and his colleagues at the roslin institute of edinburgh okay I hope uh, you already know the term clone and use often but in this story you can understood how clone is formed okay 
is, is the story of Edinburgh, Scotland, in which first time clone is made. Uh, clone was made. They successfully cloned a sheep named Dolly. Dolly was born on 5th July 1996 and was the first mammal to be cloned. It is the first mammal. You have to understand that first mammal uh, which uh, has been cloned. Okay. This is uh, uh, first we read the story then I tell you that what are the figures there. During the process of cloning Dolly, a cell was collected from the mammary glands of a female fin dorset sheep. So you can see this is a female fin dorset sheep and this, it is a male, second female escotic blackface avi. Okay. Avi. Similarly, egg and obtained from a scotic blackface avi. The nucleus was removed from the egg. Then the nucleus of the mammary gland cell from the fin dorset sheep was inserted into the egg of the scotic blackface avi whose nucleus has been removed. The egg thus produced was implanted into the scotic blackface avi. Development of this egg followed normally and finally Dolly was born. Though Dolly was given birth by the Sc Scottish uh, blackface away, it was found to be absolutely identical to the fin dorset sheep from which the nucleus was taken. Since the nucleus from the egg of the Scottish blackface away was removed, Dolly did not show any character of the Scottic blackface away. Dolly was a healthy clone of the Finn Dorset sheep and produced several offspring of her own through normal sexual means. Unfortunately, Dolly died on 14 February 2003 due to a certain lung disease. Since Dolly, several attempts has been made to produce cloned mammal. However, many die before birth or die soon after birth. The cloned mammal animals are many a times found to be born with severe abnormalities. Okay, so this is uh, you can say uh, only one uh, mammal which is successfully uh, produced till now, you know, for, uh, which uh, lives from 1996 to 2003. Okay, so I hope you will be understand till here. If you find any difficulty, you can ask to me. Thank you.